One of the most popular groups of roses are climbing roses, and they are spectacular. Jackson Perkins has a phenomenal collection, but I know this has happened to you. You planted a climbing rose, trained it straight up the trellis, and when it comes time to stop and smell the roses, it involves a step ladder because they're about nine feet in the air. Welcome to success with climbing roses. And it's not just horizontal. You've got about horizontal to about 45 degrees. I call that the Bloomerama Zone. In the pruning video, we touched briefly on pruning climbing roses. This is more in depth on climbing roses. This is how to give you what you've always dreamed about, that wall of climbing roses. You can picture yourself sitting under there in a wonderful chair, cup of tea, pinky raised. You know exactly the image that I'm talking about. In order to get that, you just got to understand a couple of basic theories about climbing roses. That starts with understanding the anatomy of a climbing rose and the difference between a main cane and a lateral and what their functions are. This is the main cane right here, growing from the base of the rose. These are main canes. These are main canes. This is a main cane. This is the structure, the scaffolding that holds this climbing rose together. Follow this main cane up here, and I've got a lateral right here. The lateral bears the flowers. So keep in mind, main cane structure, laterals bear the flowers. Now that you know that, let's talk about how to train this climber to give you that wall of roses. This is my main cane, the structure, the scaffolding of the rose. But I know if I train it straight up, I'm only going to get flowers up here at the top. And I want flowers all along. That's where the laterals come into play that bear the flowers. So what do you do? You train the cane more horizontally and miraculously, laterals break. How about that? It really is just that simple. And it's not just horizontal. You've got about horizontal to about 45 degrees. I call that the Bloomerama Zone. So keeping in mind by training my roses in that Bloomapalooza zone, that 45 degree to horizontal angle, basically what I'll do is simply just kind of weave them along this fence here. Keeping them horizontal, I know my laterals are going to break, I'm going to have blooms all along this, and not just at the very end. But I know what you're thinking. Okay, Mr. Rose Smarty Pants, you've got a horizontal fence. It's nice and long. It's horizontal by nature. I don't have a horizontal fence. I've got a trellis that goes up my wall. I've got an arch over a pathway. I've only got about that much room to do with it. How am I going to train that horizontally? Well, Mr. Rose Smarty Pants has your answer. Here's my Mr. Smarty Pants answer. I talked about the rose being horizontal in order to get my laterals to break. Well, remember I also said 45 degrees work. And that's the key to getting a wall of flowers on the side of this beautiful arch that I got from Jackson and Perkins. I'm going to take the cane, I'm going to train it over this way, then I'm going to bend it at 45 degrees and bring it back this way. And I'm going to continue to snake it back and forth across this trellis. You can see this one, I can even come in from the other side and do the exact same thing. You want to do this when the canes are young and pliable, however. Once they get old, you won't be able to do this. But snaking them back and forth at 45 degree angles, either on this wonderful arch here or a trellis, will give you that same wall of flowers. Here's your season-long grooming tip when it comes to climbing roses. In the pruning video, we talked about pruning. Never prune the main canes. It's okay to prune the laterals. That rule applies even all season long. Never, ever, ever prune the main canes. You can trim the laterals all you want. And trust me, you're going to want to prune these laterals. I've seen some of them get six, seven feet long. The next thing you know, they're like a big octopus and they're sucking in children and small dogs and things along those lines. You can keep them groomed. So these laterals, you can cut them to within like 12 inches of the main cane if you want, if that's what you want to do. That's a more formal look. If you want a more informal look, you can even live it a little bit longer. It's more of a shaggy look. That's the season long grooming. You can basically prune the laterals after any kind of flower flush all season long. That's perfectly fine to do. That keeps the rose in control. It encourages it to rebloom. But again, with that rule, never ever prune the main canes. I hope we've made it a little easier to understand how climbing roses work. And understanding the difference between main canes and laterals, how they work, how they function, that bloomerama meter zone that we talked about, that's going to give you success. That wall of roses, and you're going to be out there with your cup of tea, pinky rays, and absolutely no time whatsoever. I'll give you a couple more tips before we go. Grow other vines with roses, clematis in particular, fabulous with roses. Those purple blooms against the rose blooms is a great combination. That's that whole layering thing going on again. Wonderful thing to do. Keep in mind as well. It takes climbing roses about two to three years to fully mature and develop. So in the first year, you're going to have a lot of green growth. That's that main scaffolding structure, the main canes growing into place. The second year, the ladders will start to come out. You'll get some flowers. The third year is when they come into their own, and there is nothing more beautiful in a garden than a climbing rose in absolutely full bloom. For Jackson and Perkins, this is Paul Zimmerman, and thanks for joining us in the garden today.